Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. We're going to be looking through a magazine today. Um, every time I get one of my Crochet World magazines in the mail, I pay for the subscription myself, hashtag not sponsored. Um, I like to look at it first with y'all. And if you've been here before, you probably already knew that. So let's jump on in and see what we can find. It is completely sealed because they put extra stuff and mostly adverts in on the outside with this extra plastic that isn't really necessary. So, let's get the plastic off. Adverts for garden stuff. Adverts for publishers clearing houses. You know they were still around? Woman Within which I might look through just to look through because it's a fat chick store and uh, they have some really comfy type clothes that, you know, I work from home. Comfy clothes. Hello. Uh, Walk-in tub. Advertisements. Bradford Exchange. If there wasn't some kind of an advertisement for the Bradford Exchange in a magazine, I don't know what I would do. The world would be ending. Oh, and on the very back. We get to yarn adverts. Okay, I've got my sponge here to wet my fingers, so I'm not I'm licking my fingers to turn pages because that's kind of gross. Loving the cover. Look at that. That is so stinking pretty. They're calling it, well, they don't have a name on it, do they? Create waterfront vibes. 14 imaginative fresh designs. Relax and unwind with cozy afghans plus four stunning thread pieces. Thread. Oh, and by the way, on the front of the magazine, the cost of this, if you were to buy it at a newsstand, at, you know, any place that sells magazines, um, U.S. is $5.99, Canada is $6.99. This is the June 2022 edition, and um, it says display until June 20th. So there you go. All right. Advert on this side for a really pretty Ruana advertising some superwash merino wool. Here's your table of contents. They give you some pictures and just a lot of uh, well written page descriptions. Easy to read, big print. Thank you, Crochet World. All right. Letter from the editor. We can skip past that. An advert for clover hooks. You've seen those before. You don't need that. Oh, here we go. How stinking cute. Appliques for your towels. Actually, it might be the whole towel. I can't tell. The finish, then this is for a beginner. This is a number one beginner. So anybody should be able to pick up a hook and follow along and do this. And that's pretty cool. They do have some harder patterns in the magazine, but I like the way they kind of mix it up. This one uh, for the large fish, it measures seven inches long. That, that's pretty big on that fish. Um, for the medium fish, six and a half inches. And for the small fish, three inches. Is use a, a medium worsted weight four. And you use, oh, the blue, you make the bubbles too. That the fishy, fishies make the bubbles, you use a sport weight yarn. This is a small amount of light blue and a small amount of black embroidery floss to make the lines on the fishies. That looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. And I oh, know they have their contact information here too. They have the instructions for all the fishies. Oh, here's something cute. This is listed as easy, which is two of their little steps above uh, beginner. It's a number three. You have a cup on your desk that you put all the, the bits and bobs that you need in. Crochet hooks, maybe some knitting needles, pens, pencils, whatever you put in there. And yeah, it's a carry-all. All right, they're using a three-weight mercerized cotton for this. That is interesting. It's kind of cool. Put a button on the side. I didn't even notice that before. Look at the button. You button it underneath. That's actually something that I might use. Oh. oh my goodness. This one is also listed as an easy. It's called the Seafarer Dog. How cute. 
uh, eight inches long, three and a half inches wide, and they're using a number two fine, a Lee's Cotton Gold Fine Weight, you know, blah, 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 cotton slash acrylic yarn. It's a blend. Um, that is super cute. And of course, if you wanted to make life easier on yourself, you could use a bigger yarn. That's what I always do anyway, most of the time, because the really fine stuff for me is just difficult to do. But that's a cute little doggy. Oh, here's another little image of that guy. Look at that. He is so stinking cute. The next thing, wine-soaked pages. And this is about learn a stitch. Stacked two treble crochet clusters. And they give you the abbreviation for that. And stacked three treble crochet clusters. All right, and they're using a three, a lightweight three yarn, a DK of mercerized cotton. That's kind of neat. It looks like you, you have a coaster thing, a thing to put under your wine bottle itself because, you know, who needs the glass, right? And uh, use that as a little bookmark. I like that. And I like the fact that it's an intermediate because you're learning all those new stitches, but it's using an accessible yarn. A mercerized cotton is always really cool. And they give you the stitch guides. Sort of a step-by-step -step illustration of how to do it. And they've got the instructions for the coasters as well. Neat, neat, neat. Oh, wow. This is an intermediate one. This is called the Cozy Garden Coverlet. Intermediate. Instructions given for twin with changes for full queen and king in brackets. So you can make this any size you're willing to commit the time and the yarn to. Um... They're using a number three light mercerized cotton. Again, a lot of mercerized cotton today. Wow. For the twin size, this is 100 grams per skein. Uh, 218 yards. Um, 20 skeins. 20 skeins for the twin size. You buy a lot of yarn for this throw. But it sure is pretty. It really is. Ooh, ooh, I like this. This is also called an intermediate. Something I've never tried, at least not yet, Mosaic Crochet. And they are using a four worsted weight Lion Brands Fisherman's Wool Medium Weight Wool Yarn. Uh, eight ounce per ball. And for this one, and it's uh, 65 inches wide, 80 inches long is what it says. Um... Six balls of natural, four balls of, of heather. So that's ten balls of this yarn, basically, at 465 yards a piece. Wowzers. That's a lot of yarn. That's a lot of crocheting. But it's really, really pretty. The Daydream Blanket, by the way, is what that one is called. Very, very neat. Oh, Wow. Get a gander at that. It's called the Cushy Cable Throw. I was going to say, it looks awfully cushy. Well, it is. Um, for this one, the, it's an intermediate. They are using uh, Burnett Super Bulky, Super Chunky Weight Polyester Yarn in a sixth Super Bulky, 44 inches wide, 61 inches long. And they give you a chart as well with, with how to... You do the graph. They do the graph of all the stitches and everything because there are big honking cables and stuff in there. But they show you exactly how to do it. I kind of like that. But wow, all that six super bulky. It is pretty, and it certainly does look squishy. Like whoa. Oh, here we go. Just about blinded myself. <laughs> There's a mosaic chart as well. But when you look at it up close, and you're seeing all the gray and the white together. It's like ooh. All right, and more instructions for the Daydream Blanket, an advert for shoes. Ah, here we go. Well, of course, you've got the, uh, ooh, ooh, the Crochet Exclamation Point magazine that I've been wanting to look at. I may have to tear this off and subscribe to it. Um, the Pineapple Parfait Doily. This is one of those thread things. It's using a zero lace weight, which is crochet cotton thread. Uh, finished measurement is 11 inches in diameter. But with any of these like this that use the thread, 
you could go up to a larger size, you know, just kind of boop, blump it all up, and then it's bigger. I mean, you're not going to get teeny tiny. You may end up with something that'll cover your whole table, but you could do it if you wanted to try and practice the stitches. Uh, let's see, 173 yards per ball, and they're only using one ball. That, that seems odd for that. I would think it would be more. And it says, yeah, yeah, it's 11 inches if you block it. Yeah, I imagine you would have to block that with all those little picos on the outside. Look at that. That's actually so pretty. My grandmother used to make doilies, and I don't remember her looking in a pattern. She would just sit there and bloop, 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 you know, and she would also crochet a lot of other stuff, and she knitted as well. I never learned that because knitting is magic. I'm just saying. Huh? Oh. Oh, oh, when you see this, you're going to know why I went, oh, this is called the Summer Sunset Doily. Isn't that beautiful? I like that. Again, this is in zero lace weight stuff. It's an intermediate. Um, wow. I, I love the colors. I think the pattern is so pretty and so intricate on that. If only I had the time and the talent. Wow. That is so stinking pretty. You know what I would love this as? Not necessarily as a doily, but as the center to a big throw. That afterwards on the outside wasn't so fancy, but still had some of those colors in it. Mm. Love it. Yeah, finishing. Block doily. Oh, here's another doily. Look at this one. This is called the Jade Doily. Again, intermediate. Again, zero lace weight yarn. They're using, it says, the, sp the American spelling is sheep G's or sheep Jess. It's scapies, I think. Something like that. My mouth doesn't want to make that sound. But scapies, you know the one I'm talking about. They're using that. Um, wow. That is really pretty. That'd be gorgeous. On a white background like well they have it on a cream background there but mm. oh here's another picture of it without all the other color interference you can see that look at that that's that's beautiful uh, an advert and not only that it made a page come out of my book see that um, oh, and this, they've got a, um, sort of a make-along going up in this magazine. This is, these are all in lace weight, which is why I didn't even bother. Resplendent Squares, part three. And they're doing that one this time. And there's the, uh, the whole kit and caboodle there. Very pretty, but again, it's done in the zero. Oh, and here's another one. <laughs> That's pretty. I love the colors. Some editor's faves on some books. Some world of crochet with um, write-ups on different crocheters and stuff. Always fun to read. This is a number two confident beginner. And I know this stitch. This is the Sand and Waves mug rug. Super cute. Do you know why I know that stitch? Because I did a crochet along with Lisa Ladybird Loves last year. Uh, the Pick and Mix Cow. And that's one of the stitches that came up. Loved it. I actually made a couple of washcloths using that stitch because I like the texture that it made. Yeah. Oh, this is cute. This is an easy... Uh, using a four worsted weight. They're using lily sugar and cream. So they're using cotton yarn for this. It's a rug. It's a sand dollar rug. How cute is that? Let me see the finished si size on that. 20 inches wide, 25 and a half inches long. So just enough to sit down next to you or something. But that is really cute. And yes, the whole theme is beachy and you know, like that. Waterfront and all of that. I live in the mountains. I don't live near any water, but that's okay. Oh, I know some people who love this. The Sea Turtle Pillow. Isn't that cute? 
This is listed as an intermediate made out of uh, four worsted weight premier anti-pilling everyday worsted is what they're using for that. This is also an intermediate. Um, and this is for evening sea can cozy. They show it in a multicolor and then they show it down there in the plane. And they've got a tip. You can just add extra height to it, extra rows, in order to make it like for a taller water bottle or what have you. I like that. A little can cozy. Ooh, an advert for Annie's that is just beautiful. I have to show it. Learn to crochet the gothic rose afghan. That is so pretty. All of that dark yarn would make me go completely blind. Even worse than I am now. Ah, uh, here is that beach waves blanket. That is so stinking pretty. And this is listed as an easy. And they're using Red Heart Super Saver for this, so it's totally accessible. I know, a lot of people hate Red Heart Super Saver, whatever. But it's a cheaper yarn that a lot of us can afford when we want to make a big project. And then after you make the big project, you know, you do the washy soaky thing and it makes it a whole lot better. Um, they are using, let's see, in the seven ounce skeins, one skein each of turquoise, aruba sea, soft white, put this up here so you can see, uh, light blue, light gray, delft blue, pool, country blue, light periwinkle, medium purple, orchid, and pale plum. So that's a bunch of skeins, but yeah. That is so pretty. I wonder what stitches they're using in that. I'm guessing it's a lot of single crochet. Yeah, because the, their special stitch in this one is a single crochet join. But, I mean, that would be a lot of work. But, oh, how pretty. I love all those colors together. That is awesome. This is cute. This is listed as an easy. Um, this is a flip-flops placemat. Let me get the pattern off of there because, you know. Look, it's a placemat. It has little flip-floppy things where you can slide your fork, knife, and spoon. That is so cute. Um, you, they're using Super Saver again. It's acrylic yarn. And... One skein of oatmeal and an ounce or less each of the little flip-flop colors that they're using there. And they give you a close-up of the flip-flop there. How cute. I would, you could use that for something else as well. Instead of, you know, if you didn't want to make the placemats, use the flip-flop design to put on something else. Oh, this is pretty. Oh. The Shoreline Table Runner. Confident beginner, it says for this one, it's using a DK weight, super wash, lightweight, fine merino. Yeah. Um, let's see. 18 inches wide by 48 inches long. And it uses five hanks of that yarn. I'm guessing that's an expensive table runner to make. But you know, you don't have to use the yarn they show in there. You can use whatever you want, whatever you have on hand, especially if it's just something you've got to make. And you want to make sure that you've got it down first before you spend the money on the superwash merino, okay? And then there's another one at the end, block runner to size. Uh, they want everybody to block everything. I've still not blocked anything in my life. That is cute. This is called the Lakeside Blanket. I do live near some lakes. I would see people having that in their cabins and stuff. And no, I don't live near enough the lake to, to be one of the rich people, okay? Just so we get that clear. Finished measurements on this, 55 inches wide, 60 inches long. And they're using Premier Anti-Pilling Everyday Worsted. So that's an accessible yarn to use. And it'll last a long time, too. That anti-pilling yarn is fantastic. You can throw it right in the wash, no problem. This is a, a blanket that's meant to be used. So that's pretty cool. Oh, here we have kind of a little toy deal. The indoor flying disc. Bring the outdoor games inside on rainy days without fear of breaking things with this fun flying disc. Its colorful stitch work mimics clouds and rays of the sun. I 
I could still see things getting broken, not from the disc, but from people chasing it and falling and crashing and fighting over it because, well, yeah. And they're using Premier Yarns Home Cotton for that, the cotton polyester blend. So that's easy enough to do. Uh, we have an advert for knit and crochet. Nautical spoons. Oh. Okay, it's a game, and then you also make the bag to store whatever this game is. Never heard of the game, but apparently it's a thing. Um, it's called, it's marketed as an easy here, and they're using sheepies, sheepgees, skepias, soft, fun, light DK weight cotton. Or actually, it's cotton acrylic brand. blend. It's a brand. Who can speak anymore, right? Yeah, okay. So accessible if you need some toys and games to play while you're at the lake. All right. Let's see. A graph for that lakeside blanket. A graph for the beach waves. A stitch. They also give you these stand. Oh, the standard yarn weight system, which is all over the place. It just tells you what a zero means. You know what all those ones mean. They also give you the buyer's guide for the yarns that they've talked about in here. If you don't know where you can find that stuff. They give you all the contact info, like the websites and stuff. Also, a stitch guide, abbreviations and stitches, plus how to do some stitches here. There are also some stitch guides in the spe in the patterns. If there's a special stitch, they show you how to do it, which is pretty cool. And one thing I really love about this magazine, at the end, they have what they call the design directory, which is all the projects that are in the book and their page numbers. So you get a visual guide. You may not remember that something is called something weird and specific, but yeah, I'm looking for that cup hanger doohickey thing. There it is. You know, the doohickey thing. The technical term, I tell you. I always speak in technical terms. Ooh, a new pattern book from Annie's Crochet. Another advert. Crochet charts for dishcloths. That's kind of cool. Maybe I could learn to, to do some mosaic and stuff by some of that. I know it's something I need to learn. I need to do the Tunisian. I need to do all the things. So do you subscribe to Crochet World? Or have you ever subscribed to Crochet World? Um, I really enjoy it. I um, That's why I went ahead and subscribed. I knew I liked the magazine. And I said, yeah, I'll do the thing. Oh, and here's a... Yeah, I may have to go ahead and sign up for this. I know paper subscriptions what I like having the magazine in my hands yeah I could do it digitally but sometimes you just want something to hold and it's fun to get stuff in the mail that is not a bill this is so true but there's an advert the little card to subscribe to crochet exclamation point magazine and I really like their stuff too so yeah I may have to do that <sighs> Did you have a project you wanted to make out of there or that you like wish you had the time slash money slash whatever to make? That beautiful sunburst looking doily. Oh my gosh, that it, it's fantastic. And the blanket on the cover, to me, it's the colors. The colors just draw me in because I'm a sucker for the cool colors with the blue and the stuff as I'm wearing tan and brown. What? But yeah, love it. Another hit right here. Maybe I'll make something out of it. Maybe I'll just flip through it on a day when I don't have the hand to crochet. It happens sometimes. Thank you again for coming by for the flip through. There were some playlists that popped up if you're watching on most devices that you could always, you know, click on. You can always check out other playlists. I have book looks. I have magazine flip throughs. I do food stuff. I do crochet stuff. I do all the things. At least sometimes it seems that way. <laughs> I hopefully will see you very, very soon. Take care, y'all.